So in this video, we're talking about why it costs more to be poor. And I'm going to highlight six examples of how some things can be stacked against people in lower income brackets or people who are living paycheck to paycheck. Now, I don't want to get political in this video, okay? So mm -hmm. we're going to kind of shy away from proposing solutions and more so just highlighting some of the issues and some things that I've noted over the past five years of how things can be really stacked against certain people. So let's talk about it here in today's video. Uh, and the first one is food, which is one of the largest expenses in any mm -hmm. household. Now, food in this specific category, let let me just show you a chart here uh, showing you the difference between small stores versus large stores and how this can negatively affect people in lower income brackets. So you can see the difference between these two. Uh, what happens is that there's something known as a food desert and food deserts can be uh, inner cities. It could be in very rural areas. Um, but these food deserts tend to be where a lot of people in poverty or in low income brackets tend to live. Um, and so a lot of these big stores like Costco or Walmart or Trader Joe's, they tend to avoid these areas for a variety of reasons. Um, but the issue here is that when they avoid those areas, it ends up being something known as a food desert where the only food options for groceries are gas stations, convenience stores, like pharmacies, like CVSs, um, or things like Dollar General. And the problem here is that the prices in those smaller stores end up being a lot more uh, than something like Costco or Sam's Club or these bigger stores. So you can see the price right. differences here. Now this is from 2014, so some of these prices are a little bit off, but the differences in prices are probably very similar today. Um, and so looking at some of these over 50% savings by going to one of these big stores rather than a small one. And another issue here is that a lot of people who are living paycheck to paycheck or don't have very much money maybe they don't have a car and so they can't afford to go drive to these various different locations to get the best prices on their groceries and it's also very difficult to like lug groceries around on the public transportation on and i 100 percent agree yes food deserts great example in the part area where i stay it's pretty much a small town and pretty much there is a food desk, but luckily I have a car, so I'm able to go to the grocery stores I want. But reality, if I didn't have a car, I was especially I will have to go to Dollar General, you know, which Dollar General is that's a whole nother subject and another video that can be reviewed in another day. I mean, they are the king of taking advantage of poor people and price gouging. And it's really sad that you know you have these stores are being off of poor people and it's really sad. And I'm not saying that everyone's poor, but it's just unbelievable. But businesses have to find a way to make money and they make money off the poor. And I think that's just how it is. Unfortunately, if you like this video so far, hit the thumbs up and hit the like button on a bus or walking to the store if they have to. And so what ends up happening is that people in lower income brackets end up paying more for food or they end up getting fast food, which is also why I believe there is some correlations between poverty and uh, obesity and other things as well, because you know yeah. you end up having to go with whatever's nearby um, because you can't afford to get those other things. So that's something I- I agree. I definitely agree, especially when you said fast food. And I know a lot of friends that are, are like that. They have no grocery stores, no Costco, no Walmart, no Publix, no Aldi's. And all they have is Dollar General, Pizza Hut, McDonald's, Burger King, and those are the foods that they know. So they walk to them, especially take the public transportation to them. And this is kind of, that's what I kind of believe too, why the gap the way it is and why people are struggling. But it's kind of hard to change so happens to be doing it for a long time. But that's where discipline comes in. Because I've come to understand most people are not really disciplined. And if they learn how to become more disciplined and learn how to, I guess, go to the grocery store, but it's kind of hard because in those people's, the grocery store is farther away. So you really have no choice. If I was in their position, I would have done the exact same thing. I think it's very, um, very sad. I, I don't know what the solution to that is. I just wanted to highlight it there. 
Um, but let's talk about how some other things are stacked against uh, people in lower income brackets. But specifically here, we're talking about banking, okay? Banking is crazy. So uh, banks in the United States made over $15 billion in overdraft fees in 2019. I think in 2021, 2022, they made about $10 billion each year from overdraft fees. And what this is, um, is anytime that your bank account goes below $0, maybe you use your debit card to buy some gas or buy some food. And if it goes below $0, they will charge you this overdraft fee. Sometimes it's around $35, give or take, depending on the bank. Yep. Um, and this affects people who are obviously very much living paycheck to paycheck. Um, and so they are footing the bill for all these different things. And uh, it can get really expensive. Now, you know, some people might say, well, why don't you just not overdraw on your account? Uh, and in a lot of cases, people who say that probably it doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. No, it doesn't I have never experienced poverty. So, um, yeah. Uh, this is something that's pretty crazy to see that banks are making so much money from overdraft fees, $15 billion in 2019. Uh, that is a lot. Uh, and then also, let's say that, you know, maybe you have a few hundred dollars, you go to your local bank and you say, hey, I want to put this into a bank account. I want to open an account. They're going to charge you sometimes 10 or $20 per month because the bank looks at it and says, eh, we can't really make a lot of money off of you. So we're going to charge you to have a bank account here. And that's what happens at a lot of big banks all around the country. Now, sure, there are ones that don't have fees uh, for account minimums, but a lot of them still do have those account minimum fees. And that can really add up a lot for people who are generally not making very much money. Um, and I then agree. the third thing that I think is really, really kind of disgusting is payday loans. So payday oh, loans, yes. these are extremely predatory loans that go after people who are in those lower income brackets um, where they say, you know, okay, you know, maybe uh, you're struggling to pay your bills. We will front you some money. We'll get you paid a couple of days early. Um, but the problem here is that this is a very, very bad cycle. And a lot of cases of people who end up doing payday loans, who end up using them, are ones that couldn't even get a credit card. Um, and so they get a payday loan and the APR on that can be sometimes three, four, five hundred percent. And it ends up in this really bad cycle. Um, and it's, it's just something that really. Especially if you don't pay it off. Oh, my goodness. Those are criminal. I never understood why are those in lower communities, lower income communities, but my God, just they are, those are criminal. I don't. Yeah, I see why in the neighbors are doing well. They're not invited. Yeah, I can see why. Uh, uh. But they take advantage of the poor communities, and I'm not a big fan of that. It irks me when I see a lot of payday loans, uh, and they're they're running ads everywhere. They're offering people money up front, um, and it's it's just it's it, it irks me quite a bit to see things like that because uh, they're taking advantage of people who are in very tough situations. All right, now I want to briefly mention the sponsor of today's video, which is Cash. And I'm going to end this video right here. And what I can say is about payday loans is you should avoid them at all costs, even if you're poor or not. It doesn't make no sense. Those loans are criminal. I believe you should save tons of money in cash, at least save 30 or 25% of your income, no matter what, and just do that to avoid that. And if you can't get a credit card, make sure you save that money that you have so you can get a secure credit card from a bank. Because more likely, if you have the money to get a secure credit card, then you're able to get a credit card. So the lesson is is to save the money to not get a payday loan. I Honestly, that's really it. I have nothing else to say. If you like this video, watch this next video right here.